So what is a fatigue risk management system? Well, we've established that fatigue can rise from a combination of factors. Therefore, the most effective management strategy must also implement a, a combination of control measures to be successful. Your foundation should be on awareness and education. Your workers need to understand the effects and possible impact of fatigue and be able to learn to recognise the early signs in themselves and in others with an emphasis on others because often people are a poor judge of their own fatigue levels. Be open-minded to the needs of individuals. A 2006 study into napping showed that a 40-minute nap break, which averaged 26 minutes of actual sleep, improved the performance of nurses working at night for up to three hours post-nap during a 12-hour shift. This supported results from an earlier study that showed a 40-minute in-flight nap for pilots reduced the number of micro-sleeps experienced during the final 90 minutes of a long-haul flight. A paid 40-minute break during the night that improves productivity for up to three hours reduces the rates of uh, error and injury towards the end of the shift may be a very worthy investment. So think outside the box and try and include your workers in your policy development. Beyond simply looking to get the most value from your employees and fulfilling your oh and obligations, you should consider a fatigue management plan for the benefit of your employees and your community at large. Corporate social responsibility and corporate social integration are evolving concepts. They are concepts that forward-thinking companies are latching onto and forging the way, educating their employees as well as creating a, a nurturing work environment that truly enables work-life balance. The results? Well, happier, healthier, more productive employees. So it's really a win-win situation for you, the community, and your company's most valuable assets, its people. Fatigue risk management is a shared responsibility. Employers have a duty of care to provide safe schedules that permit an adequate amount of time for an employee to sleep, rest and recover from a shift. Just as importantly, workers have a duty of care to their employers to, and also fellow workers to ensure that they obtain sufficient sleep and rest in order to complete their work duties in a safe and responsible manner. So there are five key elements to consider when Im implementing an FRMS system. One, the workload and your staffing balance. Two, your work and rest patterns. Three, employee fatigue training and also sleep disorder management. Four, workplace environment design, and five, alertness monitoring and fitness for duty. So there is much work uh, to be done in moving from the dependence of the old familiar prescriptive hours of service rules in order to, to a process that requires active management but also provides more flexibility. To accomplish a switch, organisations that implement FRMS must ensure the system is firmly embedded in the health and safety management systems of the company and that it's rigorously maintained, carefully monitored and continuously approved upon. Provided it is a properly designed, implemented and managed FRMS, it offers a major step in the reduction in the health and safety risk in a 24-7 operation. We hope that you've enjoyed this short video and that it's been insightful regarding the management of fatigue. If you know or suspect that fatigue is affecting the safety and productivity of people in your business, then you can contact me at fatigue at safetyhub.co.nz or through our contact page. While you're here, check out some of the other products and services that are available and can be tailored to help measure, manage and mitigate the fatigue in your business.